Now, when we look at this question, it is asking us about episiotomy, and uh, somehow it was extended posteriorly beyond the perineal body and uh, capturing some of the structure immediately posterior. So we want to know that which of the following muscle has been compromised lying behind the perineal body. First of all, why do you do episiotomy? It is done in vaginal delivery when the head of the baby in the second stage of labor is crowning just to enlarge the vaginal introitus. Let us look at the diagram first. You have put the female in lithotomy position for vaginal delivery and the second stage of labor when the head of the baby is passing through vaginal introitus just to prevent injury to the perineal body. You are going to put one surgical incision. It could be a midline incision or it could be a mediolateral incision. Usually mediolateral is preferred because you don't want to reach the perineal body but if you have given this incision it might extend more posterior and damage the external anal sphincter. That will be a problem because it can later result in fecal incontinence. Maybe that is what the examiner is asking us about. So let us look at some of the muscles in this region before we comment upon the answer. We will find that there is a perineal body like between the anus posterior and the vagina anterior and this uh, perineal body is a central perineal tendon. Many muscles will be inserted here like uh, bulbosponges around the bulb of vagina and uh, superficial transverse perineal muscle and uh, external anal sphincter. They are all inserted here and when the baby comes you have to enlarge the vaginal introitus by giving a clean surgical suture. Usually it is uh, mediolateral but you can also give it in the midline. The thing is that you don't want the laceration in this region because lacerations when the head of the baby comes will be difficult to suture and uh, a clean incision can be sutured well to maintain the anatomy of the area. Why what will happen? If I don't give episiotomy, there can be perineal body tear and all the muscles here will be losing support leading to prolapse, pelvic vista prolapse, the uterus will prolapse outside and the rectum will prolapse outside after the vaginal delivery. You want that in the patient? No. So it's better you give the episiotomy if you find that uh, the vaginal introitus is not opening enough. But this incision, if you go beyond the perineal body, might damage the external anal sphincter and that should be our answer. You can draw a diagram yourself and then go back to the question. You have put your patient in lithotomy position and this is the perineum region. You can show the three opening in the female perineum which are urethra, vagina and anus. And as we suggested between vagina anterior, anus posterior will have the perineal body. This is the perineal body which is attached to the perineal membrane posteriorly. You will have one perineal membrane here and one perineal membrane here perforated by these two tubes, the urethra and vagina. And there are some muscles inserted into this perineal body. Perineal body is a common perineal tendon receiving insertion of many muscles and during vaginal delivery it might happen there is a perineal body tear. But if there is a perineal body tear all those muscles inserted here will become loose and there can be a chance of pelvic vishra prolapse. The uterus can prolapse outside the vagina, rectum can prolapse outside the anus and we don't want that. So it is better that uh, instead of having the baby head producing any laceration, it's uh, better to give a clean incision yourself. So before you talk about that incision, discuss some of the muscle inserted on the perineal body. You find there is a muscle around the bulb of the vagina and we call it as bulbospongiosus muscle and that bulbospongiosus muscle will be inserted here. Also there will be a superficial transverse perineal muscle inserted here. We are talking about the muscles of the superficial perineal pouch inserting into perineal body. And there will be one muscle now posteriorly around the anus we call it as external anal sphincter also inserted here. So this is going to be the external anal sphincter inserting into the perineal body. Then where is the urethral sphincter? You will find that there is one external urethral sphincter but that external urethral sphincter is in the deep perineal pouch. 
around the urethra to maintain the urinary continence. Okay, now the baby was coming through the vagina. The head of the baby is coming out and you want to enlarge the vaginal introitus. So you gave a mediolateral incision like that. In that incision, you will be definitely cutting some of the muscles in the vaginal wall territory. But if you gave a midline incision and if you extend it to posterior, posterior to the perineal body, then you might have damage external anal sphincter. And that was our question. Let us go back to our question now. It is uh, one apical tummy extending mostly beyond the perineal body. That was the thing and uh, something which is immediately posterior is the muscle we already have talked about. That means our answer will be the external anal sphincter. Why external anal sphincter? Why not ischiocavernosus? Because ischiocavernosus is a lateral muscle. It is not uh, inserted into perineal body at all and uh, it is not behind the perineal body. Okay, then why not uh, bulbospongiosus? It is in front of perineal body, not behind. And uh, what about lethal sphincter? In front of perineal body, not behind. So who is behind the perineal body? Because it is asking immediately posterior. So you will say immediately posterior to perineal body is external anal sphincter. Choice number A should be our answer.